On the last day of August in 1998, a solo hiker was struggling past an unnamed lake deep in the Wind River Range of Wyoming. This hiker was on a nine day off trail expedition that would be taking him through some of the most remote terrain in the mainland the United States. And as if that wasn't already daunting enough, when he arrived at the trailhead, this hiker was greeted by an eerie sign. It was a missing persons poster for a man who had disappeared only a few weeks earlier while covering a nearly identical route through the same mountains. This hiker was undeterred by this, however, and they set out anyways, though they definitely made a mental note to keep their eyes out for anything suspicious. And then a few days later, this hiker, this man was making his way along some loose rocks near the shore of a remote alpine lake. There were no trails in this area and the man probably figured that he was all alone, likely the first person to traverse this lake in months, if not years. But this was not the case because all of a sudden when the man looked up, he noticed another man about 50 yards away from him just sitting in the rocks. Something seemed off about this man because he was just sitting there completely still. You could even say eerily still. This hiker called out to the sitting man and asked him if he was okay. And to this, the hiker got no response. Three days later, this very same hiker walked into the Sublet County Sheriff's Office and plopped down a wallet that belonged to Reverend Mike Turner. Mike Turner had vanished while on a backpacking trip in the Wind River Range a few weeks earlier, and it was actually his name that was plastered on the missing person posters at every trailhead in the area. So even though Mike Turner's body had now been discovered, his disappearance remained shrouded in mystery. Well, at least initially. This didn't last very long because right there next to his body, investigators found his journal. And through that journal, Mike Turner's friends, his family, and eventually the world were able to take a detailed look into the final days of a man who lived and died through every solo hiker's worst nightmare. This is the story of Reverend Mike Turner. All right, folks, I'm not gonna lie to you. This story, well, it's pretty up. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, but it's also incredibly unique, even somewhat inspiring, and also certainly morbidly fascinating. So with that said, together, let's take a trip to the Wind River Range in Wyoming along the Continental Divide. This trip will cost you nothing. It's totally free. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and help us get to our goal of 1 million subscribers, especially if you're a repeat viewer. And one last thing here, before we get into this incredibly scary story, let's just keep things on the lighter side for just a moment longer while I tell you about My Heritage. That's right, My Heritage is the sponsor of this video. They are the number one service for family history research and I'm especially excited to tell you all about them because I learned a ton about my family because of my heritage. So I'm one of those people that doesn't really have a close relationship with the people beyond just like my immediate family. So I really have never known very much about my personal heritage, or honestly, I didn't even know the names of any of my great grandparents. But now, thanks to my heritage, I do know the names of them. It's honestly super fun and easy to build out your family tree. And that's the case even if you're somebody like me and you basically have zero clue about your family's origins. My heritage actually has this tool called Instant Discoveries, which makes it super easy. You add an entire branch to your family tree with just the click of a button. And MyHeritage has lots of other awesome features as well. You can search for old family records among 19 plus billion of them on their platform, by the way. I was able to find some census records that stated my great grandfather owned his own barber shop, which is crazy. He probably could have taught me a thing or two because, well, 
There's a reason I'm wearing a hat in all of my videos. You can also repair, colorize, enhance, and even animate. Uh, you heard that right. Animate your old black and white family photos. It's just such a cool service. So please click the link in the description and sign up for a 14 day free trial. And if you decide to continue your subscription, you'll get a 50% discount. One more time, click that link in the description. You'll be doing the channel a huge, huge favor. I really appreciate it. And with that said, let's get into this very, I don't even know how to say this, crazy, we'll just say, story. At the end of July in 1998, Reverend Mike Turner set off into the Wyoming wilderness. He had a very ambitious plan. He was gonna take roughly nine days to travel 60 miles through the Wind River Range on a route that was largely off of any established trails. He was also planning to do this route without a hiking partner, completely solo. Well, that is, I guess, unless you consider his dog Andy a hiking partner because he was bringing along the dog. Mike was far from a beginner backpacker and reportedly felt very comfortable in the outdoors. He had spent numerous nights backpacking in Wyoming, the Sierra Nevada, Rocky Mountain National Park, among many other wild and beautiful places. He reportedly felt close to God when he was in the backcountry. And it seems as though his adventures in the mountains were more than just a good time for Turner. They were essentially a very important part of his spirituality. Prior to his trip to Wyoming, Mike Turner had been a pastor at Boone Memorial Presbyterian Church in Caldwell, Idaho. He had been with the church for 10 years, but during the last few months leading up to his Wyoming trip, he had actually been on sabbatical. And unfortunately, maybe his sabbatical was coming to an end. And so he wanted to finish it off in epic fashion. And for someone adventurous like Mike Turner, that meant traversing the high glaciers, 12,000 foot passes, and untouched alpine lakes all by himself. He even came up with a name for his itinerary, which was Wander in Wonder. The night before his adventure began, Mike Turner took his wife out to a James Taylor concert. And then the next morning, he surprised her with flowers and a handwritten card, which read, quote, thank you for letting me live this adventure. No, wherever I am and whatever I'm doing, I am thinking of you. And with that said, on July 30th, 1998, Mike Turner and his dog Andy hiked into the Wyoming backcountry, eventually settling in for the night at Eckland Lake in Bridger Teton National Forest. Since Mike Turner was a man of deep thought and frequent reflection, it's no surprise that he brought along a journal with him. I'm not sure if he was one to share his journal entries with others. I feel like it's most likely that these journal entries were only meant for his eyes and his mind. In time, however, the whole world would be reading parts of this particular journal and this journal would essentially become Mike Turner's final words. On the first night of his trip, Turner relaxed and he pondered God's impact on the natural world and God's impact on Turner's trip through the mountains. He wrote, quote, you send the winds and the rain and yet even amidst the deep savagery and destruction of life, I sense your hand. In threatening my comfort, even my life, you challenge me to cope. In beauty and peace, you refresh me and all of it I need. God bless this trip. May it fulfill your holy purposes. Mike Turner would write similar sentiments over the next two days, all the way until day four of his trip. Day four is when everything fell apart for Reverend Mike Turner. So nine days go by. Nine days after his adventure had began, Mike's wife was waiting for him to finish and she was starting to get worried. So their plan was that Mike was gonna meet his friends and his family at the Big Sandy Trailhead in Bridger Teton National Forest, once again, nine days after he had entered the wilderness, which would have put his end date at August 8th, 1998. And to be even more specific than that, he actually planned to get there at noon. But of course, Mike's wife knew that this was wishful thinking. It would be far too difficult to pinpoint an exact arrival time before the trip had even begun. And sure enough, Mike was nowhere to be found when noon rolled around. I'm sure this probably made his wife a bit uneasy, 
but she was also far from calling in rescue at this point. They actually had a plan B, which was for them to hike in a little bit and meet Mike at dad's lake. But as the day went by, Mike failed to show up there at their plan B location as well. The gravity of the situation slowly started to sink in and Mike's wife began to recall a conversation that she had had with Mike and their daughter before he left. In that conversation, all of them had decided that if Mike didn't arrive by 4 p.m. Sunday, then the authorities would be contacted. Sunday came and then Sunday went. And sure enough, there was still no sign of Mike. Friends and family waited a bit longer than their agreed upon time, hoping that they would eventually see Mike come stumbling down the trail. But unfortunately, this never happened. And so finally, on Monday, August 10th, 1998, at 10.06 a.m., Mike Turner was officially reported missing. Searchers knew that finding Mike was going to take an absolute miracle. They needed to cover hundreds of square miles of basically untouched wilderness, and they needed to do it fast. Tip Top Search and Rescue, a volunteer search and rescue organization in the area, were called in. They searched on foot, they searched by horse, and they even searched by helicopter. They searched as hard as they could for two whole weeks, but by August 23rd, they still hadn't found any trace of Mike Turner, and eventually, the active search was called off. But then, five days later, something happened that nobody saw coming. On August 28th, Reverend Turner's dog, Andy, walked out of the wilderness, battered, bruised, and starving, but alive. This renewed the search efforts for Mike as the searchers hoped the dog could lead them in the right direction. And this is reportedly what the dog actually did. Although, unfortunately, by the time they got the dog out there, it was pretty much too late. On August 31st, a man who was traversing the Wind River Range on a near identical route to Mike Turner's, discovered Turner's body near an unnamed alpine lake. Turner was reportedly sitting up with his legs jammed between two boulders. The hiker who made this discovery was actually aware of Mike Turner's disappearance because this hiker had seen missing person posters at his starting trailhead. And so he actually grabbed Turner's wallet and continued on through the wilderness to report what he had found. This should give you an idea of how remote this area is, by the way. Mike Turner's body was discovered on August 31st, but it wasn't until September 3rd that the man finally reached the Sublette County Sheriff's Office to report the tragic news. When investigators finally made their way out to Reverend Mike Turner's body, they were greeted by a very depressing sight. Turner's legs had in fact been pinned between boulders, which rendered him completely unable to move. And perhaps even more disturbingly, the injury caused by the boulders was not what led to Turner's death. In fact, he was barely injured by them at all. He just couldn't move. He was 100% trapped. An autopsy actually revealed that the cause of death was hypothermia and dehydration, despite the fact that he was trapped only 30 feet away from a lake. So the overall picture of what happened was becoming clear but what makes the story of mike turner so fascinating is that he actually kept a detailed journal during his ordeal and so now the world has been able to take a glimpse into the mind of the man's intense struggles with mother nature his inevitable death and his faith through this journal we're able to learn in excruciating detail the uh disturbing, but also inspiring story of what really happened to Mike Turner. In his journal, he wrote that on day four, he was hiking through a boulder field above 11,000 feet in elevation, and one of the boulders that he stepped on came loose. In response to this, he quickly jumped to the next one, but he actually fell. And as he did this, the boulder that had come loose moments earlier came tumbling down and trapped his legs. According to his journal, it was a roughly 800 pound rock. One of Mike Turner's close friends said, quote, when he tried to extricate himself, 
his legs wouldn't move. They weren't broken, barely even injured, but his feet were suspended in air. He couldn't push them down or pull them up. Sideways motion was equally impossible beyond an inch or so. The two boulders had come together in the perfect configuration to form a pair of granite shackles. Mike Turner fought hard to free himself in the immediate aftermath of what happened. He was carrying a camera tripod and he actually attempted to use this tripod to pry himself free. He struggled for over an hour, nearly breaking the tripod before he realized that the effort was pointless. And so with this realization, this very scary realization, I'm sure, Reverend Turner opened his journal. About two hours ago, a large rock rolled upon me and trapped my legs. I was very careful, be sure of that, but I hurt. I am in your hands, Lord. I don't know what I face. Eventually, Turner realized that his only hope was for someone to come to his aid. And so with that realization, he turned his attention to surviving rather than rescuing himself and freeing himself. There was actually some snow within like reaching distance of him. And so he was able to use his stove to melt this snow for drinking water. And since he had his overnight gear with him, he was able to awkwardly insulate himself in order to survive that first night. I'm sure it wasn't comfortable or pleasant, but he did make it through the night and he wrote this the next morning. I am concerned about first losing my legs, second running out of snow to melt for water and fuel, third hypothermia. My biggest concern is water. I only have two quarts left. The irony is that the lake is only 30 feet away. And then in a almost sarcastic tone, but also a very disturb, he, he wrote this, it's super disturbing. I am also saving my urine. I wonder how it will taste with crystal light. Mike Turner had to be meticulous about all of his gear because if any of it fell out of reach, it was basically gone for good because he couldn't move, he couldn't go grab it. At this point, he still had a week's worth of food and he used his tent's rain fly to try and capture some of the rainfall. After he had melted all of the snow within his reach, he tied his water bottle to a rope and tried to throw it the 30 feet into the lake in order to grab some more water. Amazingly, it actually almost made it, but it didn't quite make it. It instead fell short of the lake and it got caught in the rocks and he wasn't able to get it back. Despite the just incredibly scary situation he was in, Turner was actually initially optimistic about his chances of survival. He wrote, quote, I had dreamed of a special time alone with God, facing the elements, the passes, thinking about my life, the direction of the church, about my family. Indeed, this has been all of those things only magnified 100 times. When I think about it this way, I believe I will survive smarter or wiser, more thoughtful, more aware of my limits. I do feel confident in my Christian hope. God will make a way either earthly or heavenly. This optimism unfortunately did not last, and you can probably understand why. Mike Turner had now been pinned for days with no sign of help, and this brutal reality was spiritually challenging for even the strongest of believers in God. It became evident in his writing that the Reverend felt abandoned by the very God he had dedicated his life to serving. God is with me, but I am angry with him. Why this terrible injustice, or is it the product of pride? How am I failing him, or what does he need me to teach? What is the purpose of this ordeal? Will I ever know or continue to be puzzled, angered, and feel quite abandoned by the one I serve. This would have been the perfect time for another hiker to come along, rescue Mike Turner, and provide a happy ending to this story. But unfortunately, that's not what happened because things only got worse from here. One evening, Mike Turner noticed that he had completely lost feeling in his left leg, and this sent him into a desperate frenzy to free himself. But of course, there was nothing that he could do, and he probably knew this deep down, 
and ultimately his struggle trying to save his leg ended with the leg just being trapped even tighter. I cried out and cried out to God who doesn't seem to care about my suffering, struggling, and pain and the loss of my left leg. I begged and prayed for some help in moving the rock, but none seemed to come. After either five or six days, Mike Turner accidentally dropped his journal out of reach while he was shifting around. In a testament to how important documenting his struggle was to him, he was actually undeterred by losing his journal and he began using anything at his disposal to jot down his thoughts. He was carrying a pocket Bible with him and he began filling the blank pages in this Bible with his writing. Eventually, he did run out of space there and at this point, he turned to the margins of the instructions for his stove. Mike Turner eventually became consumed with regret. At one point during his hike, he had actually decided to stray a little bit from his planned itinerary and he took a different pass through the mountains. And unfortunately, it's on this detour that he became pinned by the boulder. He wrote, quote, I feel so foolish taking this longer pass. So lonely, more than I imagined. Thought I would be found yesterday, Many thoughts, most of church, future for kids, some friends. I love you, Diane, referring to his wife. Terribly sorry for stupid illegible. So he was obviously in a very bad situation and, you know, just mentally and spiritually, I mean, this is just really tough. But at some point, Reverend Mike Turner did come to accept his inevitable death. His body was breaking down and he knew that there was pretty much nothing more that he could do. Rather than questioning God, expressing bitterness and anger, he turned to God and he turned to him with open arms. Fill me with peace, Lord. May the conditions not deny my love for you. I am ready to die, though missing my family. To live is Christ. To die is gain. I will trust in God, though he will slay me. Yet I will trust him. He is the way the truth, the light. At some point, Turner placed his wedding ring on a rock next to him so that it would not fall off his fingers and get lost. After surviving for 10 days, pinned to the rock the entire time, unable to move, Turner stopped writing in his journal. The last line he ever wrote said, quote, God loves illegible, love dad, Mike. So obviously things were different in 1998, but I will note that today, if something similar like this were to happen, if a hiker were to, were to become pinned down or just immobilized in any manner, a satellite GPS with an SOS button could be used to call for help. Again, I'm not really sure if these devices were widely available in 1998. I don't blame Mike Turner for not having one of these, but nowadays, I think every hiker should certainly have one. And I think an important takeaway from this story is that not only should you have one of these devices when you go in the backcountry, but you should also pack it in a place that is easily accessible and pack it in a manner where it's not gonna fall or become out of reach. Myself and a lot of other hikers will hang it with a carabiner on your shoulder strap. I also want to note something that I'm sure many of you maybe already have pointed out in the comments. This is that if Mike Turner had not been hiking solo, his hiking partner could have either helped push the boulder off of him or gone to summon help and Turner probably would have survived. It is true that solo hiking, especially off trail in remote areas like this, carries greater risk. Let's be perfectly clear about that. However, a lot of people still choose to do it anyway. And to this point, Mike Turner's wife was actually quoted saying, we knew an extended solo hike could be dangerous, but I've always believed that to live fully sometimes involves risk. Our Christian faith points us towards a life of courage. So I've mentioned her a few times now. Mike Turner is survived by his wife and he's also survived by two daughters and a son. Though they were obviously devastated by the loss of Mike, the journal that he left behind did bring them some comfort and it served as an inspiration for all of those that have had the privilege of reading from it. Tip Top Search and Rescue were the organization that responded to Mike Turner's disappearance. Again, this was back in 1998 and they're actually still going strong to this day, working tirelessly to save lives 
all done on a volunteer basis. I'm not affiliated with them. They don't know I'm making this video, but I do encourage you to support them by making a donation. I've done so myself and I'll have their website linked in the description. I appreciate all of you so much who are joining me in my mission to give back to the search and rescue heroes involved with so many of the stories I cover on my channel. My heart goes out to Mike Turner, his wife, his kids, and all of his other friends and family. And with that, Thank you all so much for watching.